Hey there, and thanks for stopping by. If you've ever asked yourself how a 1.93 mount compares to a 1.54 mount with regards to how your battle zero is gonna impact downrange, then stick around because we're gonna deep dive into that in this video. Now what I plan to do in this video is shoot this 14 and a half inch upper with a 1.54 mount on it out to 300 yards using a 36 yard zero, and then swap it over to this optic with a 1.93 mount and repeat the course of fire. At the end of the video, we'll then review the performance to give you hard data on how changing from a 154 to a 193 mount is going to impact the performance of your rifle. My goal is to keep all other variables the same so that we're purely testing the performance of the mounts. Now from here, we're going to move into a quick discussion around the Battle Zero theory and what it is, and then we'll fire these rifles up on the range to give you solid data out to 300 yards using that 36 yard zero with the two different mounts. And at the end, Let's check back here and we'll review the results. Let me know what you think is going to happen to our downrange performance when we change just the optic height. Now note, this is one video of a four-part series where I deep dive into other components such as barrel length, removing a suppressor, and testing different bullet weights out to distance. So if you'd like to know more about how your Battle Zero is impacted by different variables on your rifle, then make sure you check out my other three videos. Before we take a deep dive into the different variables and how they impact your battle zero, let's take a couple of quick minutes and review the battle zero theory so that we all have a baseline of what we should be seeing in the data so that we can accurately understand what the variables are doing downrange. So when I say battle zero, this representation is going to give you a look at what I'm referring to. So the horizontal line that's straight represents your line of sight. So that's you looking through your optic. That's always going to be a straight line from your rifle, basically to infinity. Then down below, the arc represents the trajectory of your bullet. So for a battle zero, for instance, a 36 yard, 300 yard zero, what happens is your bullet's gonna start out below your line of sight, say inch and a half, two and a half, whatever it might be, depending on your optic mount height. It starts out below line of sight, comes out of the muzzle and it's gonna rise up to meet your line of sight. No, the bullet doesn't defy gravity, the barrel is essentially aimed up to meet line of sight. So where it meets line of sight here, that's your close zero, 36 yards, for example. So the bullet comes out of the muzzle, climbs to meet line of sight, then it goes above line of sight for some period of time before it falls back down to meet line of sight at what we would call your far zero. So a 36 yard might also be a 300 yard zero. So that's close zero, far zero. Then the bullet's gonna fall indefinitely below your line of sight. So when you're using a battle zero, the theory is put your sights in the center of a generous vertical target. And then if you don't know the range to that target, your impact should only be plus or minus a couple of inches from your line of sight within the range that we're going to define, say in this video. So things to keep in mind, bullet comes out of the muzzle. It's gonna rise to meet line of sight. It's above line of sight for some period of time before it falls back down. You have to ask yourself how much error can you accept here above line of sight for your impacts and then how much error can you accept below line of sight past your far zero and with those numbers in mind that's how we're going to determine the rifle to use and get an accurate understanding of how changing different variables are going to impact your performance so for the bulk of this video i'm going to zero at 36 yards so this is going to be known 36 yard zero then as i change my variables we're going to see on cardboard at 100 say 200 and 300 yards what my bullet is actually doing. So the theory on a 36 yard zero is that my bullet should really only be above line of sight about three to three and a half inches, and then below line of sight, three to four inches out to about 300 yards. That's gonna allow me to hold center and make those impacts. But what I think you're gonna see in this video, as I change things like optic mount height, barrel length, suppressed versus unsuppressed, and different bullets, we're gonna see the above and below line of sight numbers change. What that's an indication of is changing of our far zero. So if we know we're zeroed at 36 yards, what we see in the data above and below is going to indicate where our far zero is. And with that, we then have to ask ourselves, how much error can we accept? Say it's only three or four inches. Then you would know with your setup at a 36 yard zero, you can shoot out to X distance. Maybe it's only 275 yards to get that plus or minus three or four inches to make your impacts. 
So maybe your setup or changing these variables, rather than being a 36300, it might actually just be a 36250 or a 36275 based on the trajectory of our bullet and how much error we can accept. So that said, let's move into testing the different variables. I think it's going to be really fun to see how each of these different items are going to change the performance of our bullet downrange. So here we go. A really important part of the Battle Zero equation is your optic mount height. Now when I released my original video a year ago, I did all of my shooting with a 1.54 inch optic mount height. And many of you commented asking what happens to my Battle Zero performance if you swap to say a taller, maybe 1.93, which is gaining popularity nowadays. So in this portion of the video, I intend to find out exactly what happens with a 36 yard zero when I swap from a 1.54 to a 1.93 mount. Now, how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna fire the same upper, my Colt 14 and a half inch block two upper using MEN 193 ammunition. So we're gonna keep the upper and the ammunition consistent throughout this course of fire. First up, I'm gonna fire this Athlon one to 10 in a Reptilia AUS mount. This is a 39 millimeter mount or 1.54 inches. Really cool, really excited about this because it was actually provided by Ally Munitions. They stepped up when I gave them the idea of the video and asked if they could provide the LPVO in a mount. Also really cool because they are working on a really cool service where they will actually mount your LPVO or your scope in your mount for you. So when you take it out of the box, it's properly torqued, properly leveled, ready to set it on your rifle. And that's exactly what this was. So that's a service that'll be coming soon from Ally Munitions. So our first rounds will be through the Athlon 1 to 10 in the 1.54. After I fire my rounds with the Athlon 1 to 10 in the 1.54, I'm going to swap over to my right on 1 to 10 LPVO, which is actually in a zero gravity 1.93 inch mount. Also really exciting here because zero gravity stepped up and provided this mount to me when I gave them the idea of the video. This is actually my first experience with a 1.93 inch mount height. I didn't own one myself. My original plan was to buy a spacer and slap it under a 1.54 to gain the extra height. But when I was talking to Zero Gravity, I said there's too many variables in that, too many clamping forces or too many clamping surfaces. It'd be way better if they just provided me a 1.93 to mount this optic upright and compare side to side. So really appreciate Zero Gravity stepping up to provide me this taller mount. For a course of fire, what we're gonna do and shoot the cardboard here. On the left side, we'll shoot the 1.54, and on the right, we'll shoot the 1.93, and we'll fire at the 100, 200, and 300 yard lines. And after I finish shooting, we'll meet back here and we'll review the results. 1.54 inch mount is zeroed at 36 yards. We'll put our first rounds here at the 100 yard line, bottom left dot. All right, see those just a bit high there. Push on back to 200. 200 yards with a 1.54 mount. Left column, middle dot. All right, can't really see those. There is a little bit of a right to left here, so they could be pushing a little bit left, but let's move back to 300. 1.54 inch mount, 36 yard zero, 300 yard line. Shooting the left column, top dot. Definitely some right to left, but hopefully they all land on the cardboard. No chance of seeing those. From here, we'll swap over to the right on 
in the zero gravity 1.93 mount and we'll reshoot it. I swapped over to the right on one to 10 in the zero gravity 1.93 mount and zeroed at 36 yards. Now we're at the 100 yard line and we'll resume our course of fire starting at 100, then 200, then 300. We'll review the results at the end. A little bit of glare from the sun on my scope. I can't really see those impacts. But uh, next up, 200 yards. 1.93 mount, 200 yards with a 36 yard zero. Right hand column, middle dot. Yeah, I can't see those either. Next up, 300 yards. 300 yards with the 1.93 mount. We're aiming at the top right dot. All right, let's take a close up look at the results. Optic mount height comparison. Some really cool results here. Let's take a close up look. Let me know what you think. Are you surprised by the results or are these in line with what you expected just by changing your optic mount height? Now remember what we did in this portion of the video was use my 14 and a half inch block two upper with the Athlon one to 10 and the Reptilia 39 millimeter or 1.54 mount fired M193 ammunition up the left hand side using a 36 yard zero at 100, 200, and 300 yards. Then on the right hand side, we swapped over, still using that same rifle and same upper, but using the right on one to 10 in the zero gravity 193 mount and fired the same ammunition out of the same upper up the right hand side using the 36 yard zero. For results, here's what we saw. With the 154 mount, we saw our rounds land about three and a quarter inches high at 100 yards. At 200 yards, I would say those rounds landed 2.75 inches high. And then at 300 yards, we saw our rounds start to trend a little bit low. I measured the center of this group about four inches low or just over one minute. So you think about that 36 yard, 300 yard zero theory. This is very much in line with the theory. Then we swapped over to the 193 mount and found some really neat results. So when I moved to the 193 mount at 100 yards, my five rounds landed, I called the center of this group about four inches high. So we gained about three quarters of an inch or three quarter MOA at 100 yards. Then at 200 yards, we can see our rounds trending higher yet again. I measured the center of this group at 4.5 inches high. Then at 300 yards, this is pretty neat. I found the center of this group landing about two inches below my point of aim. So by simply swapping from the 154 to the 193 mount, you can see using a 36 yard zero, my point of impact at each distance down range was higher. So you think about that zero theory, there's a couple of things here to keep in mind. When you zero, if you use a true 36 yard zero, you're going to have more difference between your point of impact and your point of aim at your intermediate distances, but it's actually going to push your far zero further out. So what you're seeing here, my far zero with a 154 mount is actually a little bit closer than it would be with a 193. So depending on your intended use or intended goal of your rifle, you definitely want to keep in mind the mount you're using, how far you want to shoot, and how much error you can accept between your point of impact and point of aim. Now, 
Say you want the same performance as a 154 out of your 193 mount. What are you going to do? You're actually going to zero at a further distance or you're going to zero a little bit low at 36 yards. So if you zero a little bit low at 36 yards, we would simply convert these differences over to mils and you could bump your zero down that number of mils. That would be the easiest. You could convert that to inches to figure that out. Or you could use your ballistic calculator and find a slightly further distance to zero versus 36 yards. Now, why would you go further than 36 yards to achieve the same performance as a 154? It has to do with how fast that bullet is coming up to meet the line of sight. So at 36 yards, with a 193, you have to cover almost two inches of ground within 36 yards, so there's a lot more angle. Say you push out maybe to 40 yards, I don't know this for sure, but 40 yards, your bullet is coming up to meet line of sight a little bit slower, so not as aggressive, and that's going to achieve lower performance at 100, 200, and it will also lower your performance out here at 300 yards. It's gonna shorten your far zero. So pretty cool to have hard data of how a 154 stacks up with a 193 using a true 36 yard zero. Let me know what you thought about this portion of the video. All right, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around to check out this video. I hope you found some value in watching. You gotta let me know in the comments down below. Was there anything you saw in this video that surprised you? Or did the data you see match what you're already getting out of your rifle? Was there any takeaway that you saw here you want to go out and try on your setup? Let me know. Let's interact in the comments down below. Now that said, my channel's seen a ton of growth recently, and I appreciate each and every one of you that are engaging with my videos, subscribing, and taking the time to watch. If you've made it this far, I want to ask for your help to continue growing. Leave me that comment down below, like the video, share with your friends, but most impactful would be to subscribe. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be in line for the next video drop that I've got just like this. Also, don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. It's another great place for us to interact. I can give you a sneak peek of what I'm working on. We can chat in the DMs. And that's where I come up with a lot of video ideas. So help me grow this channel. Hope you're there for the next video. Thanks for watching. and We'll see you next time.